Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Manticore's Tavern. It is I, Manticore, because it's my tavern. You get it? It's also a thing from Onward, the Disney movie. I uh, thought it matched pretty well. Anyways, um, we are here with another video and today I'm going to show you guys a short PK video. It's not short because the duel lasted a little bit, uh, but before we get into the video, don't forget that we have an awesome Discord server called the Pop One Podcast Hangout. The link to the server is down below in the description. And we are also hosting a Numeron Deck Core giveaway. Make sure that you guys click on the link in the description as well. Uh, two separate links, so make sure. I mean, they'll take you. They'll both take you to the Discord, but the specific link for the giveaway takes you directly to the message all you have to do is leave a react on that message and you'll automatically be entered for a chance to win the numeron deck core giveaway and i will be picking a winner at the end of the month uh, but going straight into the video guys we are going to be doing a showcase of phantom knights which is one of my favorite decks versus eldlich now a lot of you guys know that eldlich is a top tier deck in the game right now uh, when people are running you know, goes and match, people are running skill drain. Skill drain absolutely shit on me this duel, right? So I'm gonna show you guys step by step. I think I'm gonna go a little bit slower um, with my descriptions and my thought process for this specific duel. And I'm gonna tell you guys how I was able to outmaneuver the Eldritch player and play uh, to the best of my ability. Now I did rely on one specific card that I drew twice quite a bit. So as you can see, he sets four, which gives you an indication that he is probably either playing Eldritch or Altergeist or maybe possibly Sky Strikers, but more than likely, it's always going to be Eldritch. So as he sets these cards, as soon as he sets his first card, that's the thought process you have to put in your head. Normally, people don't set their first turn immediately. Like they, like they will play their play and then they will set cards towards the end of their turn because they don't want the possibility of their cards being destroyed throughout their play. So... We know that he is likely playing Eldritch at this point, right? So now, I don't have a fantastic hand here. You know, I have Max C, but Eldritch does not sum do mass summoning. We have the top deck Scythe. That's not what I want to see, because I do want to go into a Dogger or something like that. You know, if I do go that avenue of approach, Scythe is a great choice here. But, again, we are thinking that we are playing Eldritch at this point, and we have no need for scythe because they don't utilize their extra deck nearly as much right now we do also have droll two droll and lock birds we do have the one suchinoko and a foolish burial here now the first thing i'm going to do is go ahead and set my scythe because whenever i activate my suchinoko in just a minute i don't want it to get destroyed like you know i, I want to use scythe and utilize its potential if i can and not just have it be a random card be sent to the graveyard so i'm going to attempt to try to bait out an ash here with my foolish burial and it does not seem like he has one so i'm going to go ahead and send my ancient cloak here now the reason why i sent my ancient cloak here is because as you can see i only have one starter for my link for my cherubini i need to make sure i can get another starter in order to be able to make a play here right so i send my ancient cloak and it, when you send your ancient cloak this early in the game, it's highly unlikely that you're going to be able to resolve Rongo because you're going to run out of resources. So I'm having to opt out for using the scythe potential here and going with my torn scales. So I have not normal summoned yet, and that's the reason why I chose my torn scales. And I want to be able to use his effect to be able to make my plays, right? So I will normal summon him, but he does have a compulsory. Now that's not something I was necessarily expecting. However, at this point, he does return it. And your thought process as a player has to be what's going to keep you alive. Now I did have Danger Suchinoko in my hand. I had Max C, Droll and Lockbird, you know, but I, so I could have activated my Suchinoko and just special summoned it in defense position. But then that would have just been a single level three with zero defense in the field that would be run over regardless. So I'm just going to choose to keep it in my hand because I do not believe that my opponent will be able to OTK me here. So once it comes back to my turn, I will then try to utilize my torn scales again, use Tsuchinoko's effect and continue from there. Now I am sitting on these drills in case he does want to use cards to add cards to his hand. He's going to go ahead and send his skill drain, you know, which was very odd. You know, I definitely thought that maybe he wanted to set his skill drain, which makes me believe you know, when your opponent uses an Eldritch effect or something like that, when they discard a card that is really, really good, and they have, for instance, three set cards, it's almost an automatic given and 
potential that he already has that skill drain set. So he's going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to go ahead and max C here. That way I can get a draw off of it in case he does summon it. Now, here max C does not necessarily mean, like, you know, when he activates his Eldritch, he, has, he sends it to the graveyard, and then if it's in his graveyard, he can send one spell trap to control to the graveyard and add it to his hand. Then you can special summon one zombie monster. So that does not mean that he is going to summon one monster, but he can. So he's going to go ahead and use his effect. He's going to send my set card to the graveyard to be able to add it to his hand. And because I activated Maxi, he will not do it. Um, now, I may have shotgunned that a little bit, but regardless, he still had the option. If I chained my Maxi on his Eldritch effect to add it back to his hand, he had the option to keep it in his hand. So he probably would not have anyways. Now, I do draw into a Skullmeister. Now, again, like I said, I'm not drawing the best cards here. These are not cards I want to have in my hand. Um, but I do pull out for the win here. So I'm going to go ahead and normal summon my Torn Scales. And like I said, he sent his Skill Drain earlier using his Eldritch Effect in hand. He has a set Skill Drain. Those are just things you have to keep in mind. And then on top of that, he's going to go ahead and activate his Divine Wrath. And it states that when a monster effect is activated, discard one card, negate the activation. And if you do, destroy it. So I'm going to go ahead and try to activate my Tsuchinoko. Unfortunately, it does have the negation and destroy. So it is going to get destroyed at this point. And I will just go ahead and go into my battle phase and attack. Um, I was not expecting that card to be his set card. I expected my Tsuchinoko to resolve, but it's okay. Um, so he's just going to normal summon his Banshee and attack over my 600 Torn, torn Scales because a 600 attack Torn Scales is nothing to be worried about. But an 1800 normal summon is kind of scary. You know, like I have my Skullmeister, but it's a 1700. 1800 is kind of high. When you're playing your PKs, you don't have a monster that has inherent, you know, that has an original 1800 attack that you can normal summon. Um, so unfortunately, I don't really draw into anything here. I'm going to go ahead and activate my evenly matched because I am in a bad position here. He could just go ahead and use his Eldritch here, send his skull skill drain to the graveyard, add it back to his hand, special summon it. And then he has an the 3500 buffed Eldritch and the 1800 so I'm trying to do everything I can to prevent that from happening he's just gonna go ahead and use his Banshee's effect now in my opinion I think that saving the evenly match may have been an option but as you're playing you know you don't necessarily know what you're gonna be doing all the time so he's gonna go ahead and I have no monsters he draws into a Raigeki so he the Raigeki is useless to him right now so he is just gonna go ahead and set it try to activate his Eldritch in the graveyard to add it to his hand and possibly special summon it with 3500 attack but i am just going to go ahead and skullmeister that and negate his effect to be able to do that which is going to save me a little bit you know save me some more time here unfortunately i do i am just sitting with two drolls which is terrible and so here i'm just going to go ahead and normal summon i do want to just poke for 200 you could have opted to just set the card um but the you know the slightest bit of attack points matter you know i've had games where they've come down to where i've come down to 100 life points and i came back for a win um but as you can see he has he sets a card and that gives you indication that it is a card that he wants to use because he has his eldritch in the graveyard he could send one spell trap card he controls to the graveyard add it to his hand and special summon it he does not do that so obviously you have to keep in mind he did not do that meaning that this is a card he wants to use for a play later on now i do draw into his tichinoko i'm going to activate his effect it does resolve so now here i'm going to go ahead and special summon it and now i'm going to attempt to try to go into my cherubini line of play now going in here i think he does stop me somehow um obviously you know skill drains on the field so it sucks uh but um, remember that Cherubini is a cost to send from deck to grave, and it's any monster. Um, so just go ahead and, uh, or you can send a level three monster from your deck to the graveyard. So any level three, your entire deck's all level threes. So we're gonna send Graf. Graf will resolve in the graveyard. We're gonna special summon Seer with Graf's effect and go into Rusty. Now keep in mind, Rusty is here, but Skill Drain is on the field. So we're gonna go ahead and activate Seer's effect to special summon our Cherubini. Our uh, Boots is in the graveyard now, so we're going to go ahead and banish it to add a Fog Blade because I do know that he will be using his Eldritch, right? And on that, I'm going to go ahead and normal summon my Torn Scales. And now, normally, I don't just normal summon, you know, Torn Scales and just put it in attack mode. However, we are playing a very, very grindy game right now, and I do know it's going to continue to grind out, so I'm just trying to poke for a little bit, as much damage as possible at this point. 
Now again, this is the card I mentioned earlier that he did set and he did not use the effect of Eldritch to send to the graveyard to do. However, he has a compulsory and that means, you know, compulsory is a great card. If he has, if he sends his compulsory to the graveyard, you have to know that this is a card that is act that's better than compulsory, right? So he goes ahead and normal summon or special summons his Eldritch with 3,500. It cannot be destroyed by card effects and it gains a thousand attack and defense. However, it can still be targeted. So I will negate its attack effect and prevent it from attacking with my fog blade here. Now, when you're looking at it here, we have a 3,500 Eldritch. I have a 2,100, 600 or 500. When I'm looking at my extra deck and cards I can possibly go into, there are, I don't really have very many options. Yeah, I can go into my um rongo but he needs to have three materials or more and i cannot get three materials or more on an, on a general summon of rongo i can only get a two material mod uh rongo my uh raiders knight i can go into arc rebellion however we won't be able to activate raiders knight effect because of skill drain now we also have appalooza that can possibly have four but then skill drain is going to negate it and just make her have zero attack anyways we have access good we can go into, but we won't be able to use his effect to buff his attack because he only, it'll get negated off of skill drain. Um, so the only thing that I can really summon here is possibly Zeus to be able to be over at 3,500 or at least to 2,500 when it gets reduced down on the next turn. Um, remember, Cherubini is a cost, so he's still on the field. I can use his effect to send something to the graveyard and I send a Phantom Knights. And now I'm literally just trying to send my boots to the graveyard to keep drawing into fog blades. That way I can stop his next Eldritch that comes to the field. Now, because I am expecting more monsters to come to the field, I am just going to go ahead and set a Joel and Lockbird because he's obviously not drawing cards. So I'm going to go ahead and utilize it as some sort of some form of defense. And I'm going to change my torn scales to defense position because I don't want to lose the life points. Obviously, Cherubini can't be switched to defense position because it is a link monster. And then he top decks the grass is greener. Now, when you're looking at the grass is greener, he did send a couple decent cards. You know, he sent Elixir of White Destiny. He sent his Guardian of the Golden uh, Land, um, a Conquistador. So he sent some decent cards he could utilize, which does fuel his field here. And he goes ahead and sets a Conquistador. Remember where your opponent sets cards. Always remember what they have. And if you have to, there's this little clipboard down here you can click on to see where it sets. Now you click on Conquistador here. That's where he sets it. There's this little image right here that shows your opponent's field. It can sh it shows you where that card is set on that field. The only time you don't know where a card is set is when they set multiple cards at the same time and your opponent has the option to shuffle them. And then at that point, you don't know where they are. So remember that is a conquistador here, right? And then he's gonna attempt to activate his golden land card here. Uh, it states that he can set an Eldlixer spell or trap directly from the deck. And I'm just gonna go ahead and prevent that because if he does that, he's gonna set a Scarlet Sanguine um, and get another golden Lord on the field, which I don't want to do. And he still does it because he obviously chained and it's fine. So now he has, again, like I said, you can view where they have the cards. So you can see the Eldlixer here set in this specific spell and trap zone which is correlates to where that's at and uh we're just gonna go ahead and continue on from here so be vigilant of that i do top deck and evenly matched and what i said at the beginning was that i relied on one card that i drew into a couple times and evenly matched won me this game right so i have a bunch of cards in the field he has a bunch of cards in the field obviously if i have to activate evenly matched now there won't be too much of an effect it won't do anything really so i'm gonna att i'm gonna attempt to just let him destroy my entire field in order to resolve my evenly matched as best as possible because it banishes all of his cards face down and if he said if you said if you get rid of his el his golden lands or his uh his eldritches it's done for. If you get rid of his traps to go into his um, his Eldritch lines of play, it stops him there. So you're pretty much just going to destroy all of his resources royally. Um, so he activates the Conquistador and destroys my Rusty that I did rely on having quite a bit, but it was kind of useless just sitting there with the skill drain. And then he's going to activate another Scarlet Sanguine. And instead of summoning the Eldritch, it was very surprised he actually he uses this card called Glow Up Bloom. Um, very unorthodox for an Eldritch deck. However, it is something that he uses and he goes into an Event Dread Savior. Now he does do, use this and I'm going to go ahead and activate my Fog Blade to prevent it from attacking because my Cherubini is fueling my plays to thin my deck. 
had I not thinned my deck, my chances of drawing into my evenly matched would have been smaller. And then also at the same time, I'm also fueling my graveyard with Phantom Knights that I can use for plays later. So then he's going to activate his uh, Conquistador and he's going to set his Elixir of Black Awakening. And if you don't know what a card is whenever they set a card, if you can't click on it before it's set or before it goes into their hand, if it's revealed whenever they do something with it, you can go over here to the clipboard, click on it, and re um, you know you don't you have five minutes to make, play a turn. Take your time. So now again, I draw I draw into a TG Warwolf. TG Warwolf is a good card for an extender in this deck, and I'm gonna go ahead and activate Cherubini again. Um, let's see what's going what's going on here. All right, so now he's going to activate his Scarlet Sanguine. He's going to set a, a Huacuero. And obviously, as a PK player, I rely on Rusty a good bit. This set card being Huacuero, we are very aware that he's going to use its effect to send or to banish my uh, my Rusty, right? So now he goes ahead and links four here to go into his Brawl Sword Dragon. Good play. Not going to lie. That's a really good play here. Um because he all his monsters were sitting on the um, fog blades now i have fog blades in my graveyard that i can use to special summon now he goes ahead and draws some and so i'm just going to go ahead and activate droll at this point he's going to activate his golden lord's effect again i'm letting him do these things because i am sitting with my uh, my evenly matched in my hand he's going to hoquero again now that he has a, a blitch on the field and then he just banish my rusty like i said and he's going to set his golden land forever. Luckily, he is not able to activate this the turn he sets it. Otherwise, I would have been really screwed. So now he has three monsters he's going to use to destroy my field. And it's going to completely clear my field. And I'm going to have no th nothing on the field compared to his seven cards in the field. So at this point, again, he's just destroying everything. And he's going to activate, attempt to activate the effect. Obviously, it gets negated because of skill drain. And then he's going to end his battle phase. And on the end of the battle phase... We've got evenly matched and what's he left with skill drain like he's got a sh he, like his eldritches are gone his freaking uh boral swords gone like he, i just destroyed a bunch of his resources right and now on the end phase i'm going to activate my fog blade if you have the possibility to activate a fog blade at the end phase of your opponent's turn make sure you do that i know sometimes you want to wait you don't want to shotgun some things but if you have another fog blade you want to activate in the graveyard if it's already in the graveyard or if you intend to send one to the graveyard for a play, make sure you activate one now because you will only be able to activate one fog blade in the graveyard per turn. So now I special summon my uh, my gloves off of fog blade and then uh, because I special summoned it, I can special summon TG Warwolf from my hand. And here we're going to have game. I'm going to go ahead and activate another fog blade in my hand. So again, like I said, or in the graveyard, again, like I said, I would not have been able to activate both in the graveyard in the same turn. You can only do that once per turn. And we're going to go into an Ancient Cloak. We're going to go ahead and go into a Break Sword at this point. And just go to attack point, attack position. When you have game, do not overextend. What if my opponent has Nibiru in his hand? And I continue to overextend to try to make a big boss monster to drag on the game. Nibiru gets rid of all my cards. If I went into, tried getting um, Arc Rebellion or something, there's no point. If you have game... There's nothing on the field. There's just a skill drain. I have a 2k, 1k, and 8k. Go for the game. Don't be stupid and ruin your game and get a loss. So now I'm just going to go ahead and attack for 2k. And obviously he sees I have game. And he's going to surrender at this point. Now this deck I was playing my 60 card uh, Phantom Knights. Um, it's been going very back and forth. Uh, last night, got, guys I'm telling you, my luck has been absolutely atrocious last night i was grinding the game uh, i got to plat last night but i actually lost nine coin flips in a row nine coin flips in a row and i still won a lot of my duels going second um but here it is most of the deck is unchanged from what i've had before uh we're gonna go ahead and go over it we have the three draw and lock birds because when you're playing against tribe brigade you're playing against uh, sky strikers other pks uh, you know, just any cybers, um, AI adagnisters, like there's just things you can do to make them not be able to draw into their cards. We have Maxi because we want to draw into cards. We have Sangan. Sangan is a fantastic card here because it's a free extender here. Now you 
Typically, you just normal summon tour guide, special summon your Sangan, go into your Cherubini. Sangan goes to the graveyard and you add either your um, wielder, your tracker. You can't do tracker actually because it's 1600. You take your wielder or your boots. Just be vigilant that you won't be able to activate their effect that turn. However, their summoning uh, conditions are conditions and not summoning effects. So then we're uh, going to go into a junk forward because when you top deck it, it's a free summon. TG Warwolf, you can special summon when a level 4 lower monster is special summoned uh, on the field. Tour Guides is your normal summon to get into your Sangan. We have the Kagamuchi Knights because when you normal summon, he's a free special summon. We have the Graph and Seer for the Cherubini line of play that I showed you guys in the duel. We have two Ancient Cloaks, and sometimes you have to use it to be able to get an Extender, which forces you not be able to go into your Rongo. Uh, we have three Boots because Boots saved us here, and we just kept going into our Fog Blades. One Gloves because it's a good card. I don't really use it sometimes. It gives you a free 1,000 attack buff for your Xyz monsters, but it's just another card name. Um, we have the Ash Blossom here. I chose to go into two because three is too much. I think I draw into three too many, even with the 60 card deck. Uh, now we have uh, the two Danger Jackalopes and three Tuchinokos because these are fantastic extenders. And sometimes you want fa a Phantom Knight that's in your hand to go to the graveyard. You luck out, and then your opponent sends that, fa or they pick the uh, Phantom Knight that's in your hand, send it to the graveyard, and then you get a draw one. It's just there. This combo is, or this, the this package is fantastic. We have two wielders and two trackers very 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 rarely like i would say maybe one in every 20 duels or so i draw into one like both of the same name um so those are fantastic extenders nyan yan is a fantastic extender off of e -Telly. you summon it it goes to the graveyard make sure you don't use nyan yan before you get rusty on the field after rusty goes to the field then you're kind of free because you're not necessarily restricted to uh link monsters because when Yen Yen's effect is activated, you can only special summon rank 3 and level 3s. Um, we have the Greaves because it gives us our Rongo. We have 3 Torn Scales because Torn Scales is a fantastic card. Three Skull or 2 Skullmeisters because again, like Ash, uh, 3 is too many. I start seeing it too much. It's a good card. Um, you could easily replace this with uh, Ghost Bell. Uh, but um, I don't have it. It's a UR card. Skullmeister is a good card to go with it. Um, if you have Ghost Spells, use Ghost Spells because um, Ghost Spell is a level 3 and you can normal summon it and go into your level 3 plays. Uh, the Scythe because we do play Dagda and we can Scythe lock our opponent. We have three Lancias because we play Dagda and that's another card we can set for utilization. And then we also use it to keep your opponent from banishing, you know. So um, there are zombie decks that are playing uh, that are pretty prevalent right now. Um, there are Ed Endymion monsters, there's Phantom Knights, there's Tri Brigades, Lyralisk, all kinds of things banished right now. So three of these is very, very useful because you play against them so much and you want to see this. Uh, we have the two Kaijus because some Nibiru is a good card, don't get me wrong. But your opponents know how to play around Nibiru quite a bit. So if they're going around Nibiru... You're going to have a dead card in your hand. You don't want that dead card in your hand. The Kaiju is never going to be a dead card in your hand. You can use it to go over a zero, you know, to go over a uh, normal summon monster with zero attack, zero defense if you want. It's never a dead card. Um, we have the Monster Reborn because it's kind of an extender. If you don't have the monsters fueled in your graveyard, then Monster Reborn is kind of dead, but that's very rare. Uh, Foolish Bureau because it gets us our Phantom Knights to the graveyard that we want to use. The Rota because it can add a Phantom Knight to our hand. Um, the e tellies because that's used for Nyan Yan for the most part. And if not, then we can use it for Wielder, Tracker. And then um, uh, another thing you can replace the Skull the uh, Skullmeisters with is um, Ghost Ogre. Because Ghost Ogre is a Psychic type monster that can be special that can be used for uh, e telly we have two called by the graves because we when we draw it it prevents your opponent from using max c or ash blossom or something like that um we have the wings because uh that's a fantastic card to go into your scythe lock the shade brigadine because that's what we use to go into our rongo evenly matched want us the game here i only used two and i drew into both we have three fog blades because that want us to duel here and then we uh we utilize those as much as possible and then going into the extra deck, we have two break swords. Um, typically, the second one's tip only used to go into a downer than Zeus, but there are times when it comes up and you need it. The bamboozled to go into our Rongo plays. We have the evil swarm nightmare because sometimes we don't want to go into Rongo. It's just like a bat. It's an emergency backup um, when your opponent special summons monsters. Uh, change them to face down defense position. 
the downer to go into the double Zeus effect. We have the Rongo um, Raider's Knight to be able to use your Break Sword into Raider's Knight and then into Arc Rebellion for OTKs. And OT Arc Rebellion for OTKs, obviously. Zeus for um, Mass Removal, the Cherubini, because Cherubini is our primary card we go into along with Rusty. Uh, to make our plays we have dogda because it gives us our plays for the scythe lock if rongo is not going to work out uh, we have the unicorn to be able to go into our access code um sometimes i summon unicorn just to send it just to discard a card from my hand so i'll uh target um i'll discard one card that i want in the graveyard to the graveyard and target unicorn with himself and just send him back to the graveyard to the extra deck and i get that card in the graveyard from my deck from my hand now rusty because rusty's fantastic um appalooza is kind of a dead card i don't like appalooza I never resolve appalooza appalooza always gets run over it gets kaiju it gets negated something so it's a dead card in here um you can replace this whatever you with whatever you want and then access code for win more missions but there you have it guys this fantastic phantom knight grind duel against eldlich it was very stressful but i pulled it out and i won the duel evenly matched and Fogblade won the duel for me um that's gonna be it guys don't forget to like and subscribe i do have the giveaway in the description and i also have the link to the pop one podcast discord server in the description as well make sure i see you guys there i love you all let me know what you guys want to see next i can make other decks and stuff like that i do focus on sky strikers and phantom knights a lot but i am going to start working on despias i'm going to start working on my i keep telling you guys i'm going to start working on my anime character progression series but just haven't gotten to it but a uh, lot more content to come guys don't skip out keep coming back i love you guys i appreciate all that you guys do and i'll see you guys in the next video peace